Hey folks, Cheska here. So we're in Genshin Impact and it is early morning, but I wanted to do a quick video because I just hit Adventure Rank 45, which means I unlocked World Level 6. And I wanted to run through all the major farms that people do and uh, give you some idea of what those are like at 6, what the drop rates in like domains are, what the drop rates from the world bosses are. Because I know a lot of people have questions like, when should I start farming X thing? When should I start doing domains for artifacts? Is it 35, 40? Is it 45? So I'm just going to run through all of them real quick and we'll talk about it. So uh, the first thing I, I'll look at right now, because we don't actually have to do them, we just look at them, is the ley lines. So I believe at world level 5, ley lines give you 4 books. And it looks like now they give you, that's purple books by the way. It looks like normal ley lines give you now four to five purple books. So actually on the same level of efficiency as um, uh, the alchemical crucible, the elemental crucible event. So uh, this is slightly better. I This is fine. I was kind of hoping it was guaranteed five, maybe six, but this is in line with everything else. So that seems fine. And then uh, more ley lines at world level five gave 52,000. Uh, Mora and now they give 60,000 Mora. So those are both slightly more efficient. I would say if you need Mora and Ley Lines, doing it at world level 5 is totally fine. You're, you're ever so slightly less efficient, but it's not that much less efficient. So those are two ones that are safe to do. Now let's just jump into some footage of the different domains and bosses and whatnot. So the next thing we'll look at are the two weekly world bosses. And I'll show you the whole fight in case you're curious what these look like at world level 6. So, the thing t with these guys are, they're essentially the same fight all the way through. Uh, they hit a little bit harder, but that that's basically it. I don't think anything mechanically is hugely different with this version of the boss. Uh, I don't really even bother trying to dodge in this first phase, I just brawl with him to get him to phase 2. I know a lot of people do have trouble with this boss. Uh, if you're not beefy enough to just brawl with him, then... Remember, all his attacks are super, super telegraphed, so it's pretty easy to avoid them entirely if you're just paying attention to what he's doing. Remember that you're invulnerable during the initial frames of your dash, so pretty much any attack in the game, if you dash when it's about to hit you, you'll not take damage because you're invulnerable. Uh, particularly goes for this phase where he's dashing around. You could try and shoot him, but I don't bother. Just wait till he starts running at you and then dash the last second, and you'll avoid damage. He'll dash twice and then he'll do one more run around then jump and then he's uh, in his vulnerability well he's in his second phase and you can burn him down from there so just wait until it's about to hit you and dash that, that that's like <laughs> advice for pretty much any mechanic in this game any boss attack so he's gonna jump in uh i completely forgot that he's not actually vulnerable until he does his howl so i start going in on him don't do that wait till he does that howl and now he's vulnerable, and we can now we should dump everything on him. It's fine though, because we've got a lot of damage, obviously. So between please swapping out and dropping all their stuff and our death down and deluxe phoenix and whatnot, this boss goes down really quick. If you do have to brawl of him, just again take it slow and uh, watch for his telegraphs. So drops, lots of gold drops there. Uh, the important part to note, it dropped one 5-star piece, which I believe is now guaranteed at world level 6, and then two talent mats. That's really important to know. So if you didn't know, when you get your characters to talent level 6, uh, they will start requiring these talent mats. Uh, so there's three from the Wolf and three from Storm Terror, and they're random which one drops. Those don't start dropping, I think, until world level 5, so adventure rank 40. And then they start dropping two per week at uh, world level six. So with these bosses in particular, I think the thing you need to pay attention to is what world level you'll be at the end of the week. Don't do what a lot of people do, uh, where like Monday rolls around, the first thing they do is run off and fight these bosses and kill them, because you very likely actually miss out on drops if you do that. What you should do is look and be like, oh, I'm adventure rank 38 right now on Monday. Will I be 40 before next Monday, before the reset? And the answer is yes, then wait till you are 40 to do these bosses because you do them at 38, you're not gonna get your talent drops. 
And uh, similarly, if you're like 44 at the beginning of the week and you think you might be 45 or higher at the end of the week, then wait till the end of the week because you get two drops instead of one. And this is important because uh, it's random which one drops from these guys, and each of them drop three different ones, and each character only takes one specifically. So being efficient here matters because it's a weekly lockout. Remember that char character talents go up to 12, and they have three talents. So uh, it's going to take easily months, if not an entire year in some cases, depending on what your drops are, to max out your character talents. So try and be efficient here. And it's also worth noting, there is in fact one more tier after 45, I believe. I think there's a level 50 version of these fights. I'll do a video on that down the road, but uh, I'm quite a ways off from <laughs> 50. That's probably at least a couple more weeks away, I want to say. And uh, like it, it's Saturday now, so obviously I'm not going to be 50 before the next reset, so it's fine for me to do them now. But let's take a look at Storm Terror. So much the same way as the wolf, uh, Storm Terror essentially does exactly the same thing he always did, it's just he hits a little bit harder. You can try and shoot him this phase, you don't really have to. I think some people feel like they need an archer for this, you don't. Uh, there's vulnerability phases. Like the wolf, he telegraphs everything, so remember, that claw attack just dash when it's about to hit the platform and you'll be fine. If you don't do that, it does hit for quite a lot, so be careful of that. But yeah, you don't need an archer, because he's going to slam his claws into... Uh, the platform and I'll just run over and beat up the claws and I, you, I do way more damage here than I do shooting him with uh, with aim shots and then just climb up and burst him. Fairly simple boss, it always has been. I think people overcomplicate it a little bit. And we'll just burst him as far as we can. But if I practice timing low, I could probably one phase this, but we're going to two phase it for now. He will start shooting those projectiles at you, be careful. They kind of get mixed in, like they're hard to see with the, the background color and everything else going on, so make sure you actually pay attention to them. And then he'll do this platform thing. You just need to shift platforms, fairly simple. I mean, everywhere in those, I do Storm Terror right now, right? Certainly by world level six, I would hope you have to Storm Terror down. One thing that's a little bit annoying is while you're flying around here, you can't really dash because you're in the air, so be careful there. Because that thing did hit pretty hard, it took Fischl down like 60% of her health. Then he'll do one more dash, and we'll just dash out of it. And then he'll start swiping the platform, and we can just take him down. Aim shots in this game I feel like need to be rebalanced, because they're really clunky, but... They also don't do enough damage to be worth how clunky they are. They're like, they just do less DPS by far than really anything else. So, yeah, aim shots. I, I wonder if that would change with Child. We'll see. His Child uh, pulls out a bow <laughs> for part of his uh, alt. So, uh, so, we'll finish this guy off and we'll talk loot. So, we're going to run up. Remember, these take 60 res in the claim. And as you see, a bunch of uh, gold loot again. Notes here. There's one uh, five-piece glad or sorry, yeah, f five star gladiator piece. And then it looks like they only dropped one talent mat, but that's actually a double drop. There's two uh, Valens, uh, two of Valens Claw there, so it does seem like all these bosses drop two of the Talon Nats every time you kill them. Small sample size, so there might be variability there, but that's what it looks like for now. Okay, next thing. The next thing we'll look at is Rodea of Locke. We're looking at this one specifically because I needed uh, the Ascension Mats for Mona, but assume that it's going to be a similar drop rate for Electro Hypostasis, Trial Reach is fine, any of the 40 resin ascension mats bosses. I know this is a boss that gives people some trouble, in particular because of the diving birds that it spawns. Uh, I'll talk about how to handle them when we get to that part. The rest of these things it spawns though aren't too bad to be honest. This boss is particularly annoying I find to fight because you can't really burst the boss down. Uh, you've got to kill all these little 
these little illusions it spawns to damage it. So just this boss takes a lot longer than all the other bosses. I believe it does start spawning diving birds here. And the thing with... Oh, no, it spawns a big fat bird here. After this thing's gone, it will spawn diving birds. Okay, here's the diving birds. So, thing to know about them. People have trouble dodging their dives. There's two things you can do. One thing is if you stay relatively close underneath them, they're not, they can't dive you. So, like, Deluxe under, under it, it has a lot of trouble actually hitting the dive. It completely missed with that dive attack. The other thing to know is a lot of people think that the dive is not teledrafted. It is, in fact, teledraft. You just need to watch for it because it's a little bit more subtle than most telegraphs. The bird just dips before it will dive at you. And then if you have an archer, uh, especially one that can auto-target uh, like Fischl using Oz, it helps a lot because as you can see Oz is just shooting the birds. So dropping Oz on these birds will take care of them pretty quick because Oz will just shoot up at them. Fischl's autos will also, like her normal attacks will also tend to shoot up at them if you do it while you're standing under them so main tip for that is just try and stay under them don't try and stay far away from them hoping the distance will help it won't it will get you killed staying under them will make some of their attacks miss not all of them necessarily but enough that it will probably get you through it and also important note as you saw a lot of characters have enough height on their attacks uh, that even though it doesn't look like they should be able to hit an airborne target, they can. So Deluxe Phoenix actually managed to kill the birds, even though it looks like it wouldn't hit high enough. It does hit high enough to burn the birds down. So loot. So important things to note here. Uh, I don't have a huge sample size because I only did this once because I didn't want to burn tower resin on it. First thing is it did drop a 5-star artifact piece. I'm going to assume 5 stars are guaranteed at this point just based on drop rates for everything else. They might not be, but they seem very high likelihood or guaranteed. But the thing that's going to matter, this cleansing heart, again, small sample size, but it only dropped two. So uh, that would lead me to believe that it's, it's still two to three per boss. I need to do more fights to really determine if that's true. But that if that is true, that means this is one of the safer bosses to farm early because uh, you're mostly doing it for the ascension mats. You need ascension mats early. You're not really doing these bosses for the five star pieces. I mean, maybe you are, but it's mostly about ascension mats. So if you need something that doesn't like drastically get more efficient to farm later, it seems like this is one of your good bets because definitely at world level five, it was consistently two to three mats per kill. And based on just this, this one fight, I would assume it's still two to three mats per kill. So the last thing we'll look at is an artifact domain. I think this is the thing that people have the most questions about in regards to world level, and rightly so, because everyone's farming artifacts, it's really important to get more powerful in this game, but they want to know if they're doing a reasonably efficient version of the artifact domain. So note on that, this is a relatively small sample size. It's early morning, I've only run a handful of these, but my results have been fairly consistent. Another thing to know though is, um, Remember, these fights change the higher world level you get, so be ready for that. Uh, luckily, Venti and Plea have no problems with uh, these enemies. They make short work of them. These Electro Mages get really annoying if you let them cast and get into their ultimate phase where they are terrible lightning mode and just nuking you the whole time. But they can't really do that if they're being juggled in a Venti ult. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make quick work of her. And let's look at the loot. I, I do think, though, this game has this issue where you almost feel like you're being inefficient at earlier world levels. That's definitely true. We're always just searching for efficiency in our farms. So, immediately you see from loot, I get one five star, two four stars. And I would say that's fairly consistent with my results so far. I've run it like two or three times, and every time it's been one five star, two four stars. So I would assume that at world level six, artifact domains are guaranteed to give you a five star. And 
I'll have to do this some more and see if you can get two five stars, but right now it seems like there's always at least one five star every time you run it. So yes, it is much more efficient to do artifact domains at world, uh, world level six at adventure rank 45. So do I think it is more efficient to wait till later world levels in order to farm things like artifacts? Yes, I absolutely do. It's going to be much more efficient to farm artifacts at Adventure Rank 45 than it is at 40 or 35 or whatever. However, that's not the same question as, do I think you should wait until 45 to start farming certain things? And the answer to that is, it depends on who you are as a player and what is going to give you the most satisfaction in the game. That might sound like a cop-out answer, but I think it's the most accurate answer I can give here. So let's look at artifacts real quick. Uh, you're going to hit a point where I am, where you're running primarily five-star artifacts, and anything that's four-star is a placeholder. I will eventually replace all these four-stars with five-stars, and I will replace the badly rolled five-stars with well-rolled five-stars. And along those lines, yes, 45 and above is when I want to start doing that because I have the most efficient version of the domain. However, the thing that is going to be more unique to you that you have to decide is is that a satisfying experience for me to have to hold all my resources until 45 because if you are saving all your resources until you do the most efficient version of uh of the farm the question i ask is is that going to cause you to have such an unsatisfying experience that you're going to quit the game before you even get to adventure rank 45 because the answer is yes then absolutely you should spend your fragile resin before 45. Uh, if you can hold on to 45, that's going to be most efficient. But that's irrelevant if you get so frustrated with the game, you quit before then. And I guess an extension of that is it's going to depend on if you're free to play versus someone that is kind of dolphining, spending a little bit of money in the game, or whaling even. Because if you're not buying resin refills, then fragile resin becomes much more precious resource because if you're a free to play you, what you don't want to do is blow all your fragile resin before you're 45 and then hit 45 and not be able to farm anything that's not a great position to put yourself in so uh be aware of that as well and then other things like do you want to do abyss because if you want to do abyss prior to 45 you're going to still need artifacts and if you don't run the domain to get good artifacts you're probably not going to make it very far in the abyss so another thing to factor in what matters to you now uh, a more technical question i guess is like which farms are going to be the most efficient early on before you hit 45 or well whatever the max level for the farm is so the one you should avoid doing a ton of before you get to 45 is on any of the artifact domains I think reasonably you could do the artifact domains at 40 to 45. I wouldn't hit them really hard. I wouldn't blow all your fragile resin on them because you're still getting a more inefficient rate of five stars. You're getting a five star every like two to three runs at 40 to 45. Uh, whereas at 45, you're getting 45 and up, you're getting a five star artifact every run. Both cases will only, always give you purples. Uh, I really wouldn't recommend hitting these domains much before 40. You can if you just need some pieces to get through the early abyss floors, but the issue is you don't have any access to 5 stars, and 5 stars will completely replace 4 stars. So anything you get from a domain prior to 40 is completely a placeholder for something better. Uh, stuff you can farm that is more efficient, well, uh, things like like these ascension mats here from uh, this uh, weapon ascension domain, you you access the best version of this, I think, at 40, because I had this unlocked at 40. And honestly, you don't need the gold ones uh, to uncap weapons to 6-star, to, un to send weapons to 6-star until, I think, adventure level 50. So you don't really need to worry about the gold ones for now. You only need the purple ones uh, to take them to 5-star. So uh, you can do these earlier. The, the, this one's probably fine. Also remember you can convert these up because you can convert three green ones into a blue, three blue into a purple, three purple into a gold. So these are okay to do. 
talent domains uh, you do unlock one at 45 that gets you the gold books but you don't need so many gold books because again you're mostly gated by the weekly mats so these are okay to do too and you can convert these up anything you convert up it's not as bad to do early in addition to that uh, this mora ley line got more efficient at 45 sure it went from like 52,000 more to 60,000 more, but that's not such a huge difference that it's a huge feels bad to do this early. Similarly, these XP domains, uh, not domains, ley lines, uh, these ley lines dropped like four, like four books before 45. At 45, they dropped four to five books, so slightly more efficient, and it's going to be slightly less efficient all the way back uh, the, the lower and lower world level you go, but these are not so mind-blowingly inefficient that you wouldn't want to do them and you're going to need to level your characters anything that like allows you to send characters or level characters i wouldn't wait on those because those are really core to the, the the gameplay experience so i i would not worry too much about doing these like i wouldn't stress too much about these being inefficient you do them early uh similarly these world bosses they still seem to drop two to three of these mats. I didn't want to blow a ton of resin immediately on this, uh, but uh, that seems to be the case from what I've done so far. It seems like they still drop two to three of these mats, and these are the ones you care about. So these are probably fun to do as well early because, again, you're going to need them in order to get your characters ascended. Granted, the higher world level ones seem to guarantee five star dro drops, but this isn't the main reason you do it at least this isn't the main reason i think you should do these bosses so yeah there's those uh these bosses the weekly world bosses uh they're weekly so if you don't do them for the week uh they go away so you should do these early uh because you should do these whenever you can uh you just want to not do them on reset on monday you want to look ahead to see where you'll be before like sunday and if the answer is you'll be the next world level on Sunday, then do them then, because that's when you're going to get the better drops. In particular, um, the thing you care about here are these talent mats, because remember, when you get to higher talent levels, you need these mats to uh, talent up your characters, and they are weekly drops, and they are random, so you want to be efficient, otherwise you're going to miss out on drops. And talent your talenting up your characters are super important, is super important for damage. So yeah, that, that's my general advice on all the things you could be spending resin on. Here's the thing though, and this is again gonna depend on you. If you don't spend fragile resin, if you don't get resin refills, if you don't spend your resin prior to 45, it's gonna take you that much longer to get to 45. So you've gotta find the pace that's right for you. I think an issue i would say of the game a legitimate issue of the game right now is it always feels like you're being inefficient until you get to higher and higher world levels and as someone that's been really grinding out the world levels the thing happens where it's like oh i finally hit world level five i can finally do x thing and it's like but can i because there's still a more efficient version at four, at the next world level so you're always chasing this efficiency and always feeling a little bit inefficient and that can be very frustrating if you're like me and like to be spending your resources resources efficiently but yeah is it better to wait till later world levels yes absolutely for pretty much all the farms in the game is is it right for is it the right choice for you to wait till later roll levels in order to farm stuff. That depends on you. If you're going to get so dissatisfied with the game you quit before you get to those later world levels, then who cares about efficiency? Do the thing that's going to keep you interested in the game. Anyways, if you've enjoyed this, if this has been helpful, let me know down below. Like, comment, subscribe, YouTube stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!